you know, it's, it's going to be 100%. Someone's ready. Oh, goodness. enclosure so if you look in here you can kind of see this really cool water feature um, you'll see it has some moss in there so that dart frogs can hang out and enjoy it but not get lost or anything <laughs> and then it's gonna be absolutely filled with plants in the next few months we've got a lot of ferns these are all ferns we have a diathembachia and I believe an aglonema right there we have lots of cool universal rocks products and I think moss is the keyword of this enclosure because we have a lot of moss. Okay. All right. I'm Maddie. Uh, I built my enclosure with Tyler, who's over there. Perfect. This is our uh, enclosure that we made for a Mexican black king snake. Our brought item was this right here. It's a little coffin, and there's a hole in the coffin at the top where the snake can go down into this underground hide down here where you can see it. Thank you. And then we made some graves. Snake Discovery 2022. Fogger, yeah. That's pretty much our enclosure. So what we have here is we have a dart frog enclosure, or hopefully a dart frog enclosure, something similar. Could be a blue tongue, could be a fire skink, whatever you want to put in a ball python. And the idea is it's Central South America, and it's supposed to be a bioactive, humid type enclosure with a background and moss and all sorts of stuff, and it will be done eventually. That's very nice. So um, in here, I can see that you use some universal rocks. Um, we also use what is a spider wood, I think. Yep, spider wood. That's right. Um, and I see there's more spider wood up there and you attached um, some sort of uh, like substrate to the back wall. So I used Gorilla Glue and then the Gorilla Glue I put on some of this terra firma and uh, it worked out okay and now I'm just going to plant it up and hide all the imperfections and it's going to look pretty sweet when it's done. Yeah and then I see we put, is that a fake plant or a live plant? That's a live plant and I've got right by your feet there's a whole bunch more live plants and those are going to go in there too. It was nice. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> If anybody needs wire, I brought some for everybody. Oh, thank God. I'm Chris, this is Casey, we're from Garden State Tortoise, and the enclosure that we just did is basically for a northeastern reptile or amphibian in the United States of America, something like a garter snake, a young king snake, a small pine snake, or even a young box or wood turtle would probably find this very comforting and uh, a little piece of their home. And the idea behind it is that it's... Uh, it's our home. This is where we come from, and that is what the actual background is. Casey went out into the woods and took a picture. We blew it up onto a corrugated plastic sign, and that is kind of what you'd be looking at if you lived on the forest floor. That's so cool. So um, it looks like that you guys use um, fake, uh, real plants, fake plants, yep. uh, moss, and then um, more plants, and pork bark, and universal rocks, all this different stuff. So um, how did you really manage to fit it all in? here. I mean, there's so much stuff. It's one big messy puzzle. Yes. <laughs> That's how we did it. <laughs> well, honestly, the last thing I would call it is messy. It looks amazing. Thanks, man. Um, Kaufman update with Little Mike. Little Mike. So, what do you think of this, Luke? It looks awesome. You like it? Yeah. It I, I kind of too. It, it, it turned out really different than what I had in mind. But really cool. Yeah. Very different. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. It's on? Yeah. All right. How's it going, Luke? Good. Good. This is, uh, my vision has come to life. This is my Dagobah Viv. <laughs> I built it with red-eye crocodile skinks in mind. They're one of my favorite lizards. I think they're absolutely incredible. Uh, they're very unique uh, for skinks, and they're becoming really popular. There's more uh, people captive breeding them, which I think is fantastic. And um, a buddy of mine from work, my friend Dan, wanted me to do a Star Wars Viv, and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. And uh, it all came together. So I'm really excited. I got the X-Wing that crashed. Uh, R2's chilling in it. I made Yoda's hut in the background. The fog just ties it all together. And uh, I'm super excited the way it turned out. It looks really awesome. Everyone's Vivs look so fantastic today. This has been a blast. I've been really excited to be a part of this. All right, what would you like to know? Okay, so um, what is the theme of your enclosure and how in the world did you fit so much stuff in here? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, uh, I'm, I have a channel called the Tarantula Collective. I focus mainly on tarantula spiders, arachnids, scorpions, things like that. So I wanted to do something different than everybody else. I wanted to uh, not do it. I mean, at first I was like, I'm going to do a snake, but everybody does snakes. So I wanted to do something a little different, represent the arachnid community. So I decided I was going to make a communal enclosure for the Monocentrovus about four which is the Socotra Island Blue Baboon Tarantula. They're one of the only tarantula species, there's only like a few of them, that can actually be kept in captivity uh, in like uh, with multiples. So usually one tarantula, one enclosure. But with the Monocentrophus balfouri, you can have a hundred of them in there. They, they'll live communally, they get along well, they breed, and they web up a whole lot. So the more anchor points you give them, the more webbing they're going to do. So I wanted to get as much branch in there, as much rocks, as many things that they can attach their web because if you can just use your imagination in between all of these little branches will just be thick webbing everything will be just be covered in cool and not just like webbing webbing like covering there'll be tunnels and all of their little burrows and they'll have make little like highways of web tunnels all throughout the enclosure and I get really excited talking about it I'm sorry tarantula is just really kind of to grind my they that's what's my life that's what I love so I think that this is going to do well for them and uh, it's, it's different nobody's done anything for a tarantula before and there aren't very many tarantulas that you could put in an enclosure this large that would be safe so I wanted to make sure that you know that they were gonna be safe in that enclosure hello Luke <laughs> Alright, so would you like me to just uh, describe what's going on here? Alright, so this enclosure is actually for uh, small chameleons, the Brachesia pygmy chameleons, or Brachesia stump-tailed chameleons, the pygmy chameleons, carpet chameleons, jeweled chameleons, but it's not ready for chameleons yet, because obviously there's nothing up here. Yeah. Well, when we set up a bioactive environment, we actually want to set up the environment first and get the isopods and the springtails established established and really growing strong and during that time these pilea here are going to grow and fill in this space here and that's going to give the chameleons a natural place to hide which they need and the uh, tridescantia here is going to grow up over here and we can take out the fake plants once it grows up and once we have all of this plant life here we can add in the thin branches that chameleons like to use to perch on and by that time the uh, isopods and springtails are established and you have a living vivarium that your chameleon can thrive in. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Hi guys, welcome to Luke's Bug Adventure. So um, we actually built this amazing enclosure and um, I I'm honestly just amazed how we actually managed to pull this off. <laughs> we had this beautiful Gaboon Viper shed from our um, friend at M Toxins. So guys, you have to gently, carefully cut it down the middle. Snake actually looks like. Mm. Look at that. You can see the horns. Yeah. Here. Good grief, that's amazing. Okay. It's the Good. final cut. And. Ta-da! Look at this. That's the head. And look, we even have both horns that I can soak. It needs to soak in the water, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to get all of it in. It doesn't really matter if it's a bit twisted because, um, only on each little dot that my mom made, I'm going to apply just a little bit of silicone. Nice line, Luke. Thanks. Clamp. 
We have an exhibit. We have the amazing Gagoon Viper shed of fern. We have moths and plants coming out of every little hole, nook and cranny. And then I also made this. Oh, this is a curly cute plant or something. We'll put the name right here. Um, and then we have an amazing orchid mantis picture taken by Eliza Rock. Um, and then this is um, a picture taken by me. Um, and then we have a, a something beetle <laughs> and um, a mantis egg case. And what about this huge watering dish? Yeah, we have a massive water dish so that rhino rat stinks, which is what we're making it for, can right, actually, yeah, can soak in here. They and love then to soak, I made this monstrosity of a hive. You like using that? Yeah. Them. And um, we also made another exhibit. So the plant here is yeah. for the plant to drape over and then kind of create double a uh, double hive? Yeah. Okay. We also added a bunch of different kinds of isopods. We added Oreo crumble, um, and we order and we uh, put in um, a mix of isopods. An isopod. And we also put in some springtails so that we can just have a very nice like um, micro habitat um, filled with just amazing little critters hiding beneath the soil, which you'll never find. There's also, I don't know how it got in here, it's like a gold leaf. It's like a gold leaf, but it crumbles, so it's not gold. Everybody's been wondering what it is. Well, what's it been like to compete and have fun with so many reptiles loving and reptiles? Yeah, it's been so much fun. Yeah. Dave, it's over here. Thank you guys so much again for being here today and all of the work you put into the enclosures. I hope you had a fun time. Yeah, um, amazing. Thank, Thank you. you.